So a lot of people point out that, you know, that couldn't have happened this way. Well, there's a couple of things that, uh, again, Father Raymond Brown points out that show that, okay, this is not such necessarily such an unusual exception. Because at the time of Jesus, the political situation and the religious situation were such that we really don't quite have evidence as to just exactly what the, the, the legal standing of this body that was referred to as the Sanhedrin really was. And our documentation for that and the prohibition against a nighttime trial uh, comes from what's called the Babylonian Talmud, which is a collection of laws that was made in the second century AD. So it was made 200 years later. So what a lot of those who are saying, oh, a night trial would have been impossible, um, are really going according to a law that was put on the books um, 200 years later. Now, we call that an anachronism. But the fact is, uh, it would seem from the way that the Gospels are portraying this that everything was very rushed and that this trial before the high priests, before the Sanhedrin, took place at night after Jesus was arrested. And it ended by daybreak um, with them taking him to, to, to Pontius Pilate. Now, there'll be something else that we'll be saying about that in a, in, in, in a minute or two that um, lend a little bit of perspective to this. Um, well, part of it is there are some scholars, and I'm finding them more and more credible, who believe that Jesus and his disciples may have been following a different calendar than the Pharisees and the temple authorities were following. And that would have put their Passover on Tuesday and would put the other Passover on either Friday or on Saturday. And there are different tellings that sort of put one or the other. Um, now, what that might mean is that this trial, in the actual historical sense, even though it's being portrayed here as being overnight, may actually have taken place over several days. And um, it's very hard, if you really stop and think about it, it's very hard to conceive all of this movement happening as quickly as the, um, as, as the Gospels portray it. So we may actually have Holy Thursday might have been Holy Tuesday. But... I think we're safe sticking with the tradition of the church as we celebrate the sacred three days, even if there is some cause to think there may have been a little bit broader time. Um, okay. Now, what that means is we don't know the exact chronology. All of these things are sort of speculation. But... I do want to emphasize, if you take the Gospels seriously and try to put them together, they don't quite fit perfectly um, with one another uh, in, in the chronology that we've got. So, what is Jesus accused of in this night trial here? Well, let's take Mark, the oldest account. It's very interesting here. This is one of the little things on uh, in the lower left-hand corner of the page, verse 58, if you can see that tiny, tiny, tiny little writing. We heard him say, 
I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Now, here is a question. And this is one of those uh, little interesting tidbits that again shows us what can happen to, to a text. What language was, the, was this gospel written in? Everybody knows. Hmm? What language was this gospel written in? The gospel of Mark. Greek. Greek. Okay. What language would Jesus and the high priests have been speaking? Not Arabic. Please, not Arabic. Those are the, 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 the descendants of, of that other guy. Uh, um, no. Uh, Aramaic. Aramaic, yes. Aramaic, thank you. Which was sort of a popularized version of, of Hebrew. Now, the interesting thing is that sentence in Greek could not have been spoken in Aramaic or in Hebrew. In other words, those two adjectives, made with hands and not made with hands, don't exist in Aramaic or Hebrew. They exist in Greek as paired adjectives, but they don't exist in Hebrew or in Aramaic. Now, that probably means Mark was taking a, an Aramaic tradition and adding a little something to it when he translated it into Greek. It's interesting that when that is translated, when that's picked up by Matthew, he omits that. This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. So there we see one of those uh, little things that happens to these texts in, in, in transition happening here. Jesus is seen as completely silent during this it's only when they really push him, they're very annoyed, and, and push him about these charges, he then turns around and says something else. He's the one who, they, they say, are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? And then he responds to that. The easy charge, destroying the temple, I mean, that's one... That, that they got all upset about and one that they would then want to hand him over. You know, they felt that that could be a capital offense to hand him over to the Roman authorities. Um, this thing about the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and all of that, you know, the Roman authorities, as we will see, Pontius Pilate says, yeah, that's religious stuff. You guys take care of it. So what, what the... What the Jewish priests wanted to do, as described here in Matthew and Mark, is get a charge against him that would have weight with the Roman authorities to get him, Pontius Pilate, to do their dirty work, if you will. Now, what's interesting is Luke simply omits any details of the trial. You see that third there. And then, after telling about Peter's denial, then he has a very brief summary of the trial. And then, they, in Luke, the assembly rose and brought Jesus before Pilate. 